what's going on guys? We're back at it again and we're actually just gonna go to the gas station really quick and we gotta put some E85 in the car. Uh, don't mind the fat ass windshield crack. That's getting fixed here soon. I'm excited to do these kind of like vlog styles for you guys. Let's see if you guys can hear that. Should read. Oh, a little bit better. 81%, close enough. stop somewhere and we're gonna kind of chat about if you want to build an Evo and I think this would be a good little educational video to throw up on the channel before I start ramping into a bunch of content um, the only reason I feel like this video is kind of justifiable is because of the fact that I don't want some people to believe that um, oh, I can just go do everything this guy's doing to his Evo right off the bat without doing the proper supporting modifications. So that's kind of what I want to go over today with you guys. See how it goes from there. Okay, so you just bought your first Evo 10 and you want to make it fast. So these are the things that you're going to need and the things you want to look out for when you're building this kind of a platform. Everyone usually goes in stages and I'm going to kind of explain those stages and what they insist of. A basic bolt-ons, intake, blow off valve, downpipe, exhaust. As far as intakes go, um, there I mean, there's a lot out there for this platform. MAP, revision two intakes, the STM intakes, and then there is also the AEM intake as well, but it's a closed air box. My personal recommendation would be the MAP with the heat shield or the STM. Uh, the MAP with the heat shield one is um, my personal favorite. Next is gonna be your blow off valve. This isn't really necessarily a performance thing, but this is a part of the bolt-on stage. This isn't necessarily something that is required to make your car fast. It's actually just purely mostly for sound. Bigger ones that people like to go with is the Turbo Smart, the Tile, or Go Fast Bits. My, I have the Go Fast Bits. I like the sound of it, um, but again, it's purely mostly for sound. Next thing you're gonna be looking at is downpipe and exhaust. So downpipe, uh, there's two versions that you can pretty much get for a stock turbo car. You're going to be looking at a recirculated wide mouth, uh, like the AMS or the Tome. Um, there is also uh, the open dump variations, which would be like ETS or STM options as far as open dump uh, stock turbo location uh, downpipes. It comes to... Um, the performance differences between them. A lot of people say to go open dump because it does free up some exhaust flows and release uh, back pressure. But honestly, um, for a basic bolt-on setup, you don't need anything like that. But um, if you do want your car to be substantially louder, then you're gonna wanna go to an open dump. If you, you know, if you have good relationships with your neighbors, the recirc is probably gonna be the way to go. Now, next thing is gonna be exhaust, and this is a two-parter. You have your mid-pipe, you also have the cat back itself. So the mid-pipe, usually people get ETS uh, test pipes or the STM resonated version, um, but they both do the same thing. You're just kind of deleting the cat. Now, you do need to be in a non-emissions-based state uh, or carb legal state uh, to do this and run this legally on the street. So do need to be careful. Now the last part, you're going to be looking at the catback exhaust. There is a ton of options for catback exhaust for these cars. Um, honestly, I would just do your research, go online, search up videos, listen to sound clips as far as exhaust goes. Um, my car, I am currently running the Tomei uh, catback, titanium catback exhaust. I love the sound of it. I also really love the look of the single exit exhaust on these cars. So 
that is going to be completely based on your opinion there. Um, but there's a lot of options. ETS V3, Tomei Titanium Catback, STM Single Exit, STM Titanium Single Exit. Uh, you have the um, Tanabe. You have the... I mean, you have the Cobb. I mean, you have so many different options with these cars when it comes to the single exit exhaust systems. So, honestly, it's going to come down to what you want to do. And now you have your your basic bolt-ons. You've done your intake. You've done your blow off valve to get the nice noises you've done your downpipe to get a little bit more power and you did your cap back now it's time to get a tune there are two variations of tunes that you can get um there is the cob access port off the shelf tunes and there's pro tunes um personal recommendation i would only go to with a pro tune uh, they pretty much are going to get you the best results they're a little bit more expensive um you'll usually spend anywhere anywhere between you know five five to seven hundred dollars eight hundred dollars there are some other companies that do run a little bit more expensive uh as far as pro tunes uh, that usually includes dyno sessions and a lot of other things that are behind the scenes there um, but as a general consensus you're usually looking at about i want to say yeah about five to seven hundred dollars um and that's usually you having to do a remote tune or if you're going to them so the Cobb access port off the shelf tunes, you basically just go online, you go to like MA Performance. Um, I will also have all the links uh, to this in the video description below. So you can actually go and check out all of this, all these parts and everything that I'm talking about in the description here and also the websites where you get them from. So you can actually kind of see and shop around yourself as well and see what you want for your car. Um, but anyways, so... You can just go buy uh, a Cobb access port. Uh, they usually come with pre-installed off-the-shelf tunes. Now, the only thing with these tunes, they don't make much power. And I'll be totally transparent about it. They really don't make much power. They're very safe, safe tunes, but they don't really make much more than stock. So if you are looking to get every ounce of power you possibly can out of the minimalistic parts that you have put onto your car, I would get a Pro Tune. Um, me personally, I am actually tuned by Wally. Uh, tuned by Wally, that's my boy. I'll link him down in the video description. Um, he takes care of pretty much almost every platform that's out there. Um, whether it's BMW, uh, Audi, Evos, Subarus, uh, Focus RS and STs. I mean, there, he does so many different platforms. So if you guys are looking at getting your car tuned, go hit up my boy Wally. He will take, take care of you and set you straight. And now, You've gotten your car tuned, you got all these basic bolt-ons, and now you're like, you know what, I'm ready for more. Now comes the part where you wanna start making more power, even more power, like you're on the next level 450 horsepower stage, and you're really wanting to crank these things up. Um, so the things that you need to be looking at when you start doing that, and you start really throwing some boost and fuel um, through these motors, and you really start, you know, pushing them to your limits. So stock blocks, are usually rated between about four high 400s to about low 500s um, that's about how much you're gonna get out of them they're really reliable they work great and they're stronger than most other motors and it's in its line you know in it within its competition um, but it does have its limitations uh, the first things that will usually go is a rod so what I normally recommend to people is if you're gonna really push some power at these things I would stay at 450 high 400s is pretty much the max that you want to push these things there is videos and there are cases where people have pushed the stock blocks on these cars to absolute hell and back um, and i'm not saying that that's not possible obviously there's going to be those instances but for the this is for the general average joe where i'm not really um you know I'm not looking for those in-between situations. This is just purely for average Joe that wants a reliable, fun car. There's a couple of extra things you're going to need to do. One, you're going to need to upgrade the turbo and the manifold. Uh, stock turbo, you're going to max that thing out. Um, and then the manifold, it is a cast manifold. They are prone to cracking, uh, at least the stock ones. I know the MAP offers a cast uh, replacement, and those are good. 
um, but the OEM cast manifold, uh, exhaust manifolds are prone to cracking, uh, which creates boost leaks. So um, for that, what I'm gonna let you know is I would replace the turbo and the manifold. Uh, manifold, I recommend a tubular manifold. There is tons of options, but pretty much everybody that does stock, stock location uh, bolt-on turbos, you're gonna be looking at the MAP tubular manifold or the BS Fab uh, stock replacement. Um, both of those manifolds are great. They work, um, they're reliable, they're strong, they take a lot of heat. You can also get them uh, Cerakoted. As far as turbo solutions, the one and only Art Gennari Turbo. Um, he's pretty much my only my only recommendation when it comes to stock location turbo replacements. Um, I know that there is like FP, FP reds, greens, and blacks. Um, and there's also the Garrett uh, GTX, um, 3076s, 3576, and 3582s. Um, but to be honest with you, how much you're spending on those turbos versus how much you're getting out of them, the EGT turbos are the best on the market, hands down. I mean, I've I've been around them enough to where to know. Yes, the FPs are good; they make power, but you spend a lot of money on them. The Garretts they make okay power, um, and they're somewhat in the affordable some you know price bracket but honestly the AGTs are the one to go to um, he offers a ton of different solutions you can actually go visit his website in the video link below there's so many options and he does a ton of different turbos not just for evos but he does them for subarus and srt ne uh, srt4 neons and i believe bmws so go hit him up look we'll at a 55 millimeter or potentially his 62 millimeter uh stock location uh, turbos. Those turbos are incredible. I'm actually, that is what I'm running on this car right now is his 62 millimeter with the upgraded 25 pound billet wastegate. Um, and that's how the, I make the power that I'm at now for what you guys may be looking for at around the 450 to 500 range. The AGT 55 is pretty much the nastiest street turbo you can buy. It has a very quick spool, virtually no turbo lag. Um, it's rated for anywhere between 500 to 550 horsepower, um, especially on E85. And they just work, they're reliable and they're super cost efficient. Um, you're not gonna break the bank. You know, they cost a fraction of what you would spend on a Garrett or an FP and you get the same result, if not better. So, and they are also upgradable. If you wanna to go to a single scroll housing, you can, and you can do it later on. He has modular turbos, which is insane. You can't get that through Garrett. You can't get that through FP, um, in my opinion. You know, you're just kind of buying their turbo and it is what it is. He and his customer service is absolutely exceptional. So um, when it comes to the turbo, that is what I recommend to you. Fuel. So you're gonna want to upgrade the fuel pump and you're gonna want to upgrade injectors. The rest of the fuel system is okay for around that power range, but the two big things you're gonna do is injectors and pump. So for injectors, I recommend pretty much Alpha Injection Clinic. They are a sponsor of this vehicle. Um, their injectors are great. They're super affordable. They do exactly what everyone else does on the market, you know, between uh, Injector Dynamics and Fuel Injector Clinic um, and Dishworks. Uh, I mean, they do great work and they are super cost efficient and affordable. So if you're looking to do this kind of a build, um, right now I'm running the Alpha 2200 CC injectors. For you, I would probably recommend either their thousands or their 1300s or 12 or 1250s. Um, you can also go to like their 1650s. Those are also really good. But honestly, any anything over a thousand CC injectors uh, for a bolt-on car, like a full bolt-on ED5 car, uh, is gonna be pretty much what I recommend to you, um, is gonna be their injectors. Fuel Injector Clinic and, and Injector Dynamics um, are great solutions as well. You just kind of pay a little bit more. Um, but besides that, and then pump, uh, pretty much the go-to for everybody, and aside from myself, um, is the Walboro 450. So the Walboro 450, single pump, great. It will flow plenty for 500 to 550 horsepower. So aside from that, E85. Uh, you're gonna wanna go flex fuel, or you can go straight E85 if you're in a state that offers E85 pretty much at every gas station. Here in the PNW, that is not really a common thing that you get out here. So you, a lot of people out here run flex fuel. Um, but if you're in a state that offers E85 everywhere, then I mean, us E85 only tune would work as well. Um, safer fuel, make more power, 
and it's just a better fuel and it's usually cheaper now that's kind of where you're going to be hitting the limitations of a couple of things um, as well as clutch that's another thing you'll get a need you're going to need to rec uh, i recommend upgrading is going to be the clutch uh, i'm running a comp stage four you can also do the acd uh, uh, mod twin you can also do the exidy uh, twin disc as well or the quartermaster eight leg uh, those are all really good clutches ones some are stiffer than others uh, so it's going to be preference but uh, all of those clutches are great for pretty much most power levels so oh, you are looking at going the next level you are like this 500 to 550 horsepower is not enough for me i want more power i want to make this thing absolute kill mode so now you're going to be looking at doing built motor Pistons, rods, sleeve. Uh, as far as pistons, pretty much the go-to that I see is going to be either Manly Platinums or Wiseco. Uh, those are going to be pretty much the go-tos. And then as far as uh, rods, you're going to be looking at Carillos or the Manly Turbo Tough with the upgraded wrist pins. Those are pretty much going to be the uh, recommendations that I have for you. There are other options like Eagle Rods and K1 Tech and stuff like that, but personally, I would say Carrillo or Manly Turbo Tough I Beams. Now, then you're going to be looking at some head work. Oh, and then sleeves, Dart and MIDs, um, pretty much the only way. And then as far as head work, you're going to be looking at upgrading the cams. So either Brian Grower Stage 2 or Stage 3s or the GSCS 2s or S3s. Uh, for a streetable car, I would recommend uh a set of like stage twos which would be 272 by 272 duration cams um that would be the brian crower or e the gses s3 cams are pretty aggressive uh they're going to be usually on the 280 by 280 setup and they're kind of not that they're not dailyable but they're definitely not a daily driver street car friendly cam at least in these cars so i would recommend for street use um and they can still make plenty of power. I mean, you'll make seven, eight, nine hundred, potentially even a thousand out of those cams. So the S threes are just even more. That they're more designed for super high revving, ten thousand RPM, you drag racing kind of cars. So it's your preference, but I recommend the stage two variations. Now, besides that, you're also going to be looking at uh, valve springs, retainers, and also uh, upgraded valves. So for like valves i recommend Ferrea. Ferrea offers great valves and super tech and then you can also do same thing with the valve springs and retainers brian crower does offer a set of, um, a valve spring and retainer kit that usually will be purchased with their cams um, but you can also do gse uh, beehive uh, springs and retainers or you can do the super tech valve chain as well um, they're all really good stuff uh, personally i'm running an entire brian crower head so it's uh, his cam S2 cams and then the valve springs retainers and then a uh, foray of valves. So next thing you're going to be looking at is probably if you haven't already then that you will definitely have to upgrade the clutch um, to a twin disc or like the quartermaster eight leg. Um, you're pretty much going to be limited to that. So now after that, you're going to be looking at potentially upgrading the transfer transmission and transfer case it honestly depends on the usage of your trans and transfer case if it's a low mileage evo you're probably okay and uh, you can ride it out for a, quite a while they take some abuse the stock trans and stock t case in these cars will take a ton of abuse the only things that will usually go out first in the drive line is the rear diff um a lot of people uh, in the higher, higher horsepower range, will usually uh, delete the AYC system and also do an Evo 8 to uh, Evo 8 slash 9 rear diff conversion uh, because they take a little bit more power. Uh, besides that, I mean, axles are usually fine, drive shafts are fine, uh, and then again, the transmission and transfer case is subject to you know time and abuse and the mileage of the car. Um, but if you do end up wanting to upgrade your transmission and your transfer case shep is pretty much the only way uh shep trans and shep transfer case is going to be the way to go and uh i mean then you're set then from there you just upgrade larger injectors larger fuel pumps full radium fuel systems i mean there's other you can kind of make your own fuel systems out of lines and stuff like that if you're crafty and you know what you're doing but to the average guy 
Um, the fuel uh, fuel delivery system by Radium is pretty much the best in the business. Um, you know, you get the hanger, you get the uh, fuel feed lines, you get the return line kit, you get a rail, pull stamper, uh, fuel pressure regulator, and then you just pick out the injectors you want to do and the pumps and the leave and put the pumps in the hanger so it's a drop-in plug-and-play kit. Um, so it's actually really nice. And they also do offer... Uh, an adapter part for the inline uh the fuel feed line uh to put your flex fuel sensor in so that's even cooler so from there um again more power uh and then from there the last thing you're probably going to be looking at is a bigger turbo kit um you can either do the agt 62 like what i'm on or his 64 var variation um after that there are some things in the works so i would keep your eyes out for that if you're looking at building it but um yeah that's pretty much it i mean these cars are really straightforward um is wheels and tires and stuff like that um is obviously it's kind of up to you um you can do some like crazy drag radials if you want to um or bead locks or bellics or welds you know however you want to do it um but honestly for like a daily driver just on a decent set of wheels even the stock wheels and a good set of tires will hold crazy power and you're not going to bust those wheels um but if you want uh upgrade the wheels get them a little wider and then get a wide set of tires put the traction down a little better but uh, besides that that's about it um so if you guys have anything uh any input that you would like me to go over um i was just kind of going over the general stuff that people do uh at different horsepower ranges so but if you have any input please leave me in the comment section below don't forget to like the video and subscribe and stay tuned for more content you guys have a great one